in 60, 61, Jorge and, and uh, George Steele and uh, Bob Shin, uh, they'd all been putting a, a lot of, of explosives out for uh, Western <coughs> Geophysical, which was contracted to uh, British Petroleum, and just uh, south of the White Hills in that, in that area. And in those years, 60, 61, they, could still, they still did summertime seismic work. So they were running nodwells and dozers and pulling their caps around there uh, with, with cat trains on top of the tundra. And it was, a, I think, in 1963 that they made them just strictly could only do it on frozen ground. But anyway, it, it was still going on in, in 60 and 61. And uh, uh, they, there was about 25,000 pounds at Lake Five. And Lake Five was a, a long, pretty good, long, good lake for taking on. And I would go out there and I would load uh, these, these cases, they come in 50 pound boxes of vibrantize, and I would load 12 in the airplane and I would leave Umi at like nine o'clock in the morning and I'd take about 45 gallons of gas with me and have one tank full of gas and I'd get back to Umiat after 14 hours and I'd have maybe four hours of flying time. All the rest was loading and unloading and putting the gas and then you were out there by yourself and the mosquitoes were terrific and it was a lot of hard work. But it was just, that was part of the job. So, so and they, they moved me back from Barrow and in the spring of 59, and uh, just and I started flying Twin Beach along with single engine airplanes, and uh, then we went. I went, be, but before I left Barrow in the spring of 59, uh, Renee and I had got married in, on the 6th of August of 58, and she got preg pregnant with Marjorie at Christmas time in, in Barrow, and. Uh, we had been get, gotten a, a electric blanket as our, our late wedding present from my sister Randy. And in Barrow, our house, the house that, we, that the company rented for me was built in 1930. And it was owned by Lee Suvalu. And, it, and the insulation was Celotex. And you always wore your mucklers because the floor was always frozen in the wintertime. And it, at, 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 Three and a half feet, it would it would get 60 degrees. So you could sit at the table and, and eat food in, in relative comfort. But uh, we the only heat was a was a a cast iron cook stove, oil fired cast iron cook stove. And this particular morning, we woke up, and I didn't see the light reflecting from from the cover on the stove and I stuck my hand out and the wind was blowing and it was 20 below outside, and it was 20 below inside that, that house. And I jumped up and threw my clothes on and uh, we had an electric coffee maker, an electric toaster, and an electric frying pan. And I uh, uh, got Renee up and got her bundled up and I cooked breakfast and it almost froze, the food almost froze when I got on the plates. But I got her up to, the Wien Radio Shack at the F-27, we just had came in and took her to town that way, that day, and she stayed with Norma Turk, and she had known from going to Mount Edgecombe. Uh, we, Lee Staley came over uh, that, that night, and he helped, we found that we had a bunch of dirt. We're, we come out of the oil tank with two inch pipe, and then we come inside the house, and we went to three eighths, and there was a bunch of clogged dirt in there. Once we got the dirt out of there, the stove worked just fine. And about two days later, uh, I'm sitting there and, and uh, just came back from, from making a, a mail run to Wainwright and Bobby Fisher come in and he said, Max Brewer and John Schindler out at ARL want to see you. So I went, I went out there and saw them and they said, uh, we want you to go with Bobby in the two 180s, their two 180s, on, on skis to Arliss One, 